Luther Kruger here, Big Blue Sun Museum of Solar Cooking, based in Minneapolis. And I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And uh, oh, I just envy you guys with all the sunlight you got. <laughs> Minnesota, we call it the variety weather belt. So, uh, with Mark and Beth Chellum. Betty. Betty. Betty, I'm sorry. Yeah, Betty. And uh, we're here with a bunch of cookers. We're going to talk about solar cooking and a little bit about maybe New Mexico Solar Energy Association. Sure. And uh, way back, the Villager, which we just visited yesterday at the Q Lab in uh, New Mexico. I usually just have three questions and the one is, is uh, maybe the most obvious one. You know, when did you discover solar energy at all and solar cooking in particular? And then I always ask, what are you doing now? And then what do you, how do you see the future for promoting solar cooking and solar energy? So how did you, how'd you oh. find out about it? Well, I started back in 1970. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was at the University of Oklahoma, started looking at and researching uh, alternative architecture and a number of things that popped up was the uh, New Mexico movement and passive solar architecture and Steve Baer and what he was doing yeah. in uh, solar architecture. I got real excited and said when I graduate I want to head that way. Yeah. So I, I came out here in about 1974 and the New Mexico Solar Energy Association was just starting and Peter Van Dresser, the, the founder, was uh, putting together a team uh, of architects and engineers and designers to look at the feasibility of utilizing passive solar and other solar technologies to save the rural economies of northern New Mexico. And I was very lucky to, to be on the team. They were all mostly older, retired folks that loved to sit around and talk and dream. <laughs> just incredible solar pioneers and I was the gopher okay to run around and get everything awesome. done and get it all together yeah. and I learned so much that was my education in passive solar mm -hmm. solar cooking was part of it Peter was doing solar cooking solar drying back then way back then and um, so that was my introduction to, to, to solar cooking and solar drying sure. and uh, understanding through Betty, who's from Santa Clara Pueblo, mm -hmm. that you no know, solar drying was a very important part of their culture. Sure. And so I built her mom a solar dryer. Crop and dryer. Crop dryer, mm -hmm. and everything went in there from you know elk jerky sure. to chilies oh, yeah. to the peaches mm -hmm. to laundry. Yeah. You know, it was great. And she loved it. And she used it all the time yeah. for drying and shared it with, with other folks. Yeah. Well, it just seems like we have to. Everyone else has to relearn what has already been known for for millennia, and uh, it's wonderful to relearn it and uh, really oh, put it yeah. into practice. It's great. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and to be able here in New Mexico to go out to places like Chaco Canyon and see how you know solar energy was utilized way back then, sure. and it, it's extremely sophisticated. Yeah. In in how they they utilize their their climate. And archaeoastronomy yeah. uh, in, in in their buildings. So that, that's been pretty impressive. Sure. Well, and I uh, I scored the sun flash, which was one of uh, Steve Bear's. Uh, it's almost like a just kind of an afterthought for him because he did so much with architecture uh -huh. and everything else. But I was able to uh, get one from a, a couple in Oregon that live off the grid. Oh, great! Uh, farm in the middle of uh, near uh, Canyon City, um, near John mm -hmm. Day, Oregon, and uh, I actually tried to get one from. Uh, Mr. Bear, uh, maybe 12 years ago, I came uh -huh. to Albuquerque for the first time. I said, well, I know Zoneworks is here. And yeah. Track him down. He comes and I said, oh, I sold the rights to it. To this, I think it was a Montessori school or a Waldorf school mm. in Austin, right. Texas. Oh, Tried to track it down. No one there knew what, mm -hmm. what that was. Uh, someone probably had the great idea, but probably retired and no one <laughs> picked it up. So you win oh. some, you lose some. But uh, I was able to get to get his cooker. And, and, great, uh, yeah. great. But, uh, so in the New Mexico Solar Energy Association, well, I started with them again in 1974. Their first meeting was in 72. There actually wasn't a meeting. It was a conference on solar energy up at the Coast Ranch, okay. which started 20 years of incredible 
gatherings at the Ghost Ranch. Wow. And uh, people would gather from nuclear physicists like uh, Doug Balcom to just the dirt hippies <laughs> that would come out of the hills. And we'd talk about solar energy and what they did. And farmer from Estancia would go, yeah, I took this black hose and I put it up in my roof and it got damn hot and everybody's <laughs> cheering. And it was just amazing the amount of information that was shared. Sure, sure. And, and we all learned and I and many others have made it a career. Mm -hmm. And our children have grown up in the solar energy. Yes. You know, yeah. the first shower my son ever took was in the solar shower. <laughs> You know, the yeah. only house he's ever lived in was a solar house, and he's in his 30s. Wow. You nice. know, and there's a lot of solar babies, I call them, yes. <laughs> that are out there now that are, you know, raising their children the way they were raised. Yeah. And all sustainable, and it's wonderful to see. Sure. And you've been uh, with the NMSEA for how long now? Have you been on the board? And well, time, oh, or? yeah. We yeah. were both on the board okay. way Excellent. back when. Yes. And uh, it was just probably in the past 10 years we've decided, you know, we've done enough flag oh, waving. Paid, paid your dues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're, you know, just going off doing what we want to do for sure. ourselves. If people want to learn from what we do, that's super. Yes, yes. And, and we're more than willing to share. So sure. we, we welcome you. Thank you. To our home and, and see some this of our home. things here. <laughs> Like I say, how can you wake up to this every day? <laughs> it must be a struggle. <laughs> well, it changes every day, and that's what's that's exciting. That's what makes it, yeah. Never that's what makes it, yep, yep. It's always different, and uh, with snow or rain uh, or the sun, it's always different. So it's, so it's wonderful, and to notice those differences is kind of fun sure. and good. Well, I'm going to quick check the cameras, make sure they're still okay. where they should be. And then we'll talk villager. Make sure. sure. I got a little list for villager. Okay. <laughs> yes. And, and Betty's going to put in the muffins. All right. Yes. We're going to put them in this one, Betty? Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, we need to unload. the classic Burns Milwaukee that's mm -hmm. from the beginning of that that's, whole that's an old one yeah 30 40 long, years long of time yeah they didn't have a uh, a way to normalize it so I made this wonderful little I love it gadget right I saw here that. yes with with just a nail and a target that's all it takes mm -hmm. and we just put it on and yeah, I mean, that, yeah. that was just perfect and simple. Yeah. So the villager. The villager. Yeah. NMSEA has had the villager for a long, long time. As even back in the Ghost Ranch days, we, we had the villager. I think it originally came from Sandia Labs and uh, was gifted to NMSEA. They actually had two of them. And uh, we got one. And it has just gone through the second rebuild. First time it rolled off a trailer on the highway. Oh no, so it's twice. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a the, cat. This is the, nine legs. Oh yeah, That's this little. thing just keeps coming and coming. <laughs> yeah. And it was just really excited to see it rebuilt. Yeah. It was here at the house for, I don't know, about a year in pieces till we got enough folks ready to wow. rebuild it the first time that we yeah. did. But Betty and I were the keepers of the villager here for quite a while and Labor Day, Betty's an artist, we'd take it to Santa Domingo Pueblo. Sure. One of the largest and most conservative of the Pueblos, the big arts and crafts fair, yeah. as well as kind of a farmer's market of all the uh, local farmers. Yep. So we'd bring the villager down and we'd buy potatoes and corn and chili and squash and and make a big stew for everybody and 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 people loved that uh and it was a great way to share solar energy uh with the native peoples 
and another time we we take the little uh, sun oven down. The green chili is one of the most enjoyable smells. Yes. In all of New Mexico, just enjoy that chili cooking. And so we have it out there, and all day I just put chilies in there and roast them and peel them, and then by the end of the day we'd put in potatoes and other things and make a chili stew for all the vendors around us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was really you know a fun, fun experience to to do in solar cooking. Let's see what else. Oh yeah, senior citizens. Yes. At Santo Domingo Pueblo, we were talking about this yesterday with uh, Gary Vaughn, who was the president of the New Mexico Solar Energy Association. Mm -hmm. One afternoon, Gary and I were invited down to the Pueblo to work with the senior citizen women and uh, cook their traditional oven bread in the solar oven, the villager. Yes. And they were very, very nice. The women were sweet, friendly, but very skeptical. Yeah, Just so mm -hmm. skeptical. And, okay, yeah, we'll do that. We'll make the dough for you, and we'll come, and all of that. So, you know, Gary and I get there an hour early, sit at the oven, start to get the temperature going up there, and then the women arrive, and they're looking at this thing. Okay, very good. And they <laughs> gave us the, you know, little uh, loaves of bread and put them in the oven. And about an hour later, they were done and finished. And, you know, they sounded really good. And the women were really impressed. And the butter came out and the chilies came out. And that was just really, really rewarding to, to share that with these little old ladies from the Pueblo. And they were just so excited to, to be a part of that. That was in contrast to uh, our niece works for an organization called Tewa Women United. And it's uh, an organization of indigenous women that deal with women's issues, you know, from health to food to environment to farming. And uh, they have a big gathering every summer. And everybody comes out of the hills and gets together and there's drumming and music and dancing and all kinds of workshops and various camps and teepees set up and Betty and I would bring the villager over. Yeah. Right. And again, we'd start putting in uh, all the traditional right. foods that the people had. And it looked really good. Well, I've got one photograph I'll share with you. Sure. Thanks. Of yes. the inside of the villager. You know, full of chicken and corn and chilies. It's and, <laughs> yeah, it's really a nice photo. Yeah. So you'll like that. And yeah. That, that's the rewarding things. And then there were the uh, other moments at Ghost Ranch, the, you know, the solar conference that we'd have to win a Messier. And uh, Chuck and Smitty, two other friends, about as old as I am, they had a business called AAA Solar. And they were the, uh, Samford and Sons of the Solar World. <laughs> okay. You know, they take down old government projects yep. that uh, the government was bored with, and they'd break them apart, and they'd build little residential systems uh, for people and sell them real cheap. Yep. And they made their own heat exchangers, and uh, they were solarizing New Mexico. Wow. And then they were, you know, they, they had all the parts and pieces and pumps that people needed to, to, to do it yourself. And uh, because there weren't companies making solar systems back then. No. So, you know, we were on our own and looking for this part from this company and this part from that company. And sooner or later, we'd have a solar hot water heating system. And that was great. So Chuck and Smitty were pretty neat guys. And they'd come up to the Ghost Ranch conference and they weren't too interested in sitting in the lectures, but they wanted to be there, and they were going to cook the turkeys. Sure. So they had a couple of turkeys that were put into the uh, oven, the villager, and they'd sit there all day, and people would come up, and they'd say, when's that turkey going to be done? And they'd hold up a bottle of Jack Daniels and say, when the Jack Daniels <laughs> done, the turkey's done. <laughs> So that was my first uh, cooking lesson 
of, of the villager. Let me see, another time. Didn't we do a Christmas dinner? We did, right out back here. We had the villager. We did a Christmas dinner. We had turkey, cake, or it might have been pie. Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was a Thanksgiving. Sure. <laughs> so the villager served the community. I've, the one thing I've been hoping to do is uh, maybe do like just one set of, of uh, videos on the community cookers that are out there. So there's a handful of them out there that will cook uh, good volumes um, mm -hmm. and handle the traditional stuff and so forth. So. And I, I, that's why I'm glad I picked up a villager myself. And the one thing oh, I've, I've, been, I've been trying to get a hold of the Sun Oven Company, it's on their th third owner, I guess. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard back because I want to, I remember hearing about the Airstream clubs, you know, where people drive their Airstreams. <laughs> and have, you know, it's like only burning know, man for campers party. and Airstreams. To have a, have a kind of a user's group to you know, exchange notes mm -hmm. on maintaining them and so forth. And uh, the idea came to me when um, Andrew Stone said, oh, I'm, if it kills me, I'm going to learn welding. So I'm going to put this thing back on a trailer. Yeah, that was and great. I thought, well, it'd be great because uh, I'm taking pictures of mine and Susan Regali, who is a chef in Reseda, uh, mm -hmm. the Los Angeles area. And she is fit to be tied because L.A. doesn't recognize that that's heat energy that's perfectly good yeah. for cooking food. Mm -hmm. So the, the regulations are, she they won't let her. But she sent yeah. a few photos, too, that we were able to share with Andrew great. so they great. could get things done. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad Andrew took that on. Yeah, yeah. And thanks for being a part of that. Rides again. Yes, yes. We'll have fun with it. Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, future, what do you think about, uh, what, what are your tips for promoting solar cooking? I mean, obviously the stories you've told, those are, those are no-brainers. I mean, you got a community group, a festival, uh, and so forth. Oh, any, yeah. Any yeah. particular More tips? examples. Uh, well, we do it on our own, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, just because we enjoy cooking outside. Yeah. And I think people will start enjoying them. I tried to get Bandelier National Park to put some of those in the parks sure. so people can use them. Yes. And I think that would be marvelous examples. Um, uh, but I think it has a future, especially third world nations where wood is getting scarce. Yes. You know, things have to happen. Oh, and when I think they have lot. to be very efficient with the wood they do use. Yeah. And solar cooking is simple, yeah. and and it and it can be used, like you said, on a community scale, very easily. And they're yeah. doing that in India. Yeah. You oh, know, these yeah. incredible India, schools massive. that they're cooking for 500 people at yeah. a time. Yeah, is just knocking my socks off. Yeah, you One know the, the Scheffler reflectors. Oh yeah, and the way they focus energy. Why not? Yes. And you know I've seen it in rocket stoves. Yes. Uh, wooden rockets though, but there's no reason they couldn't put them into these little um, thermal electric generators. Yes. Okay, stick one in the upper corner and charge your cell phone. That's right. That's and right. And connect to the world. And I bet this out all day could probably generate enough electricity. Yes. To take care of lights. Yeah. Not necessarily cooking, but lights yeah. and communication. Yep. And with that you have education there you go yeah and that's where it's at sure well i gotta ask and we this this is so cool and uh have you made more than one of these no this unique? is the first okay. one i've made and uh it's not actually my design it's adapted from one i had seen mm -hmm. but i thought it was so sharp and so simple that i'd honor it and make it and it's just done by 12 inch by 12 inch middle mirror tiles sure that you can buy. I like the idea of you're now cooking on a flat horizontal surface. Yep. And I usually put it up on a table mm -hmm. and so I can get to it. And it gets, you know, maybe up to 200 if you really push it. Okay. And that's about it. Yep. In, in temperatures, but it's enough for a lot of things. Yeah. It's enough for a lot of things. I like the idea that you can see all the chilies and all the yes. <laughs> mirrors. Yes. So it's a, a very attractive kind of oven. And so, you know, it was just another one that I made. And when I go around and teach with the New Mexico Solar Energy Association, which I did a lot of, I take it around and we cook. Sure, sure. So uh, I pulled that one out of the garage and thought I'd share that one with you. Yes. And, you know, we, we have that cast iron pot, and the idea is get that mass hot. Yeah. 
and uh, let it be hot. We can warm tortillas in there easily. Uh, what we're doing is we're roasting the chilies so they'll peel the skin off very easily. And then we use that for, you know, any kind of a cooking. Sure. Uh, we got the cinnamon buns in this oven, which is just a typical one. We just put that in there so we could have that for dinner and have something in there. But the other oven, Betty made us a beautiful uh, traditional chili stew yep. with chili and squash and corn and tomatoes. And it's definitely ready, so anytime we can eat that. Sure. Um, the bread could go in at some point, probably in this one or that one. Yeah. That one's steamy, so maybe this one would be better. Well, and one thing I'd like, if you could talk through from here about your, basically your, your furnace. I mean, this is... <laughs> you mean the room? Yeah, the room. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, sure, we can open the door. This is the two-story atrium that we designed for the house. It's a passive solar room that faces southeast to southwest, and it heats and helps cool this home. And it's created an environment for us that uh, we really love. We've got it full of plants and flowers. We really have less than six different kinds of flowers in there. It's a great place to sit and have our coffee in the morning. And uh, it's a beautiful home. I'm working on a slide presentation called Passive Solar is More Than BTUs and Bucks. Oh, wow, yes. And it is a collection of all the beautiful exotic flowers that we've had in the sunroom. Yep. And when it comes to the bucks, we get deer that come visit us. All like and they're Betty's <laughs> friends. Live bucks. Live deer. We put water out for them because water is very important. For the animals yep. and almost every day at some point during the day anywhere from 1 to 13 come and visit us yes and they'll come right up to the windows oh, yeah. and look at betty and she'll wave to them <laughs> you know and it's very special for her yes to have that and especially during covid we were in the lockdown yeah nobody visited us but the deer <laughs> so that, that that was really good yeah. to have that company and then have this environment that we can sit and watch. Sure. You know, watching plants grow was really good for COVID time when we were in lockdown. And so, so it was very rewarding. Yes. And we got a lot out of it. And that's what heats our house. That's our heating system. Yes. And, and we get the beauty, we get the fragrance, we get the heat, we get humidity. You know, we get an environment we can sit and enjoy. And um, that's how we've been living. And uh, that's a nice way to live. Oh, yeah. And more and more people are going to start doing it. More and more people will have to. Yeah. And they'll, yeah. Uh, they're going to have to catch up. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to recall and you know, relearn, as yeah. we uh, talked about earlier. And, yeah. and for us, in, in the middle of the winter, sometimes it'll get hot. The winter, open up the windows, open up the doors, <laughs> throw it away. Yes. <laughs> you know, you got enough stored in your walls to take sure. care of for the night. And and that's kind of a nice feeling to open up and get fresh air in the middle of the winter. Yeah. And not worry about the heating and heating system. And then we've got the solar electric up on, on the shop building. Yep. And that pretty much takes care of the electrical needs, including all the cooking, including the backup electric that we'll use every once in a while to to subsidize the house. Sure. You know, we'll use wood, you know, as the first line of defense. And then if she wants, she'll put on the electric heat. We don't worry about it because the panels are generating it. And it's gotten to that point. And all our hot water is met by the sun as well. And again, it's collectors that I got about 25 years ago they were used at the time and they were given to me for free. The heat exchanger friend and I built and we just kind of plumbed it all together. And um, there are two pumps, one that circulates to the collector, the other one circulates to the um, hot water tank from the heat exchanger. So those are the two loops and 
you know, every once in a while, you just have to change a pump or clean the heat exchanger. Other than that, we got all the hot water we need. And when our teenage son moved out, we got more hot water than we need. So, you know, the rule in this house is, if you're doing laundry, use hot water. <laughs> This is beautiful. Thank you so much. Hey, yeah. You ready to eat? I'm ready when you are. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Let me get the bread. And we'll